Hi, my name is Mary Ann Hill. I'm the lead counselor here at Sherman High School, and I'm going to go over some of the information that was shared on January 27th for the incoming ninth grade parent night. This was our, our agenda for the night. We had a general session that introduced all of our administrators and counselors. We had a course registration um, information, and then um, you were able to break up into sessions. Later, I'm going to go over the BCP information and the advanced and AP information. I will share a little bit about ath athletics and fine arts as we go along and we talk about course registration, but I'll go into depth about um, the Bearcat Collegiate Program, BCP, and the Advanced um, and AP Academics, so that you all have that information. Um, our principal, Jennifer Politti, was there, along with um, Michael Mitchison, our associate principal. All of our assistant principals and counselors were there as well. And um, counselors and assistant principals are paired and um, they take care of a portion of the alphabet. So you'll have a counselor and an AP throughout your child's high school career. We talked about credit information, graduation requirements, endorsement information, the four-year plan, um, the registration timeline, course selections form information, CTE options, and then who to contact. So we'll go through all of the information the same way today. So we're going to start with the basics. What is a credit? A credit is what every high school student needs in order to graduate. We need each high school student needs to get 26 credits and they start accruing credits whenever they enter high school. There are a few middle school courses that do translate to high school credit, um, but for the most part, um, as soon as you enter high school, you start accruing credits. We have eight class periods in a day or in a two-day period since we're on a, a block schedule, um, but um, each of those eight credits, each of those eight courses translates to eight credits, and they get eight credits a year and they have four years. So they have a total of 32 opportunities to get 26 credits. So it's definitely doable. All of those extra credits just become electives and it's it, it's fine. You just have to have the, the 26 required courses um, in order to graduate. Of course, we do still expect all students to come to school um, all day throughout their freshman, sophomore, junior, and senior year as well. But you have to make a 70 or higher on your courses, the grades in your courses for semester one and semester two um, in order to get a credit. Um, in this, um, on this transcript right here, this student um, is a sitting sophomore. Um, they're currently taking English two and they made an 87. Um, so that's above a 70. So uh, the student got a half of a credit for the first semester. And then, of course, last year as a freshman for English 1, they got half of a credit here and a half of a credit here, which equals a whole credit. So that's how credits work. Um, if the student had uh, potentially gotten a 75 for semester 1, but a 65 for semester 2, we average the 2 in the average column. And as long as that is over a 70, the student can get the credit. So um, making below a 70 could be okay, depending on what the first semester um, grade is. But no matter what, if a student um, gets a 70 or higher, um, it is important that they are in attendance because if they have missed too many days, regardless of what the grade is that they earned, they could be um, could not be awarded credit um, based on attendance. So students need to be in attendance each and every day. So these are the basic graduation requirements. Um, students have to have 26 credits. That's four credits of English, four credits of math, four credits of social studies, four credits of science, two credits of a foreign language, and they have to be in the same language. The second credit of the foreign language has to be the second level. 
they have to have one credit of fine arts, one credit of PE, and six elective credits. Now, a student that is an athlete or a student who is in the band, they're going to have one required fine art credit from band, and then the rest become electives. So that's kind of how that goes. Students that complete Algebra 2 will earn a distinguished level of achievement whenever they graduate. And of those students that earn the distinguished level of achievement, those that are in the top 10% of their graduating class will be eligible for automatic admission to most Texas public four-year universities. And that would um, happen your senior year. So what is an endorsement? An endorsement is a very much like a major in college. So students choose something that they're interested in doing and they're interested in learning and they stick with it. Um, and when they do that and they, they pick a career path um, or a CTE pathway, and we're going to go over some of those today, then um, they are, are pursuing an endorsement. We have um, five different endorsements. We have STEM, uh, business and industry, public service, arts and humanities, and multidisciplinary. And the counselor can um, can very much determine which endorsement they're pursuing based on their interests, their likes and their dislikes, and what really um, seems the most interesting to them to pursue in, in high school. Um, once um, your student has met with the counselors, um, on February 7th and 8th at uh, Sherman Middle and Piner, then um, each counselor will take the information that the students have given us in, a, in the Google form that we're going to go over in a minute, and um, the counselor will build a four-year plan. Now, the most important part of the four-year plan is, one, that we have one and we have a plan for the student, but also that we are putting them on a path to be successful in that pathway with their ninth grade courses. So. Um, uh, more importantly than anything for next year is ninth grade courses, but we will create an entire plan. And then um, the counselors will meet with each student one-on-one -on -one each and every year in order to update the four-year plan. We're going to look at endorsements. We're going to look at credits. We're going to make sure that every student has what they need to be successful. And then to really, you know, individualize their graduation plan for them. Um, ninth grade um happens in late October, early November, and we invite parents to come during that time, um, either in person or by phone, um, so that you can be a part of, of that conversation. So um, look for that um, this current year in um, late October, early November for information about um, participating in those meetings. And then once your eighth grader becomes a ninth grade um, student in our uh, in our our information system that happens in the summer, then you are as a parent and the student is um, y'all are able to access the four year plan tab in the full site um, student portal or parent portal, um, and and we can go over that as well later. So this is the registration timeline. Um, your student on January nineteenth or twentieth came, uh, boarded a bus, drove to the high school, and they got to see um, our amazing CTE um, area. They got to see all of the pathways sort of at work and uh, got to talk to lots of students that participate in those pathways. Um, they uh, were able to see a, um, a pep rally and an organization fair so that they could see all of the the um, clubs and organizations that um, we offer in order to really get a sense of how they can um, participate in high school and how they can get plugged in. Um, February 7th and 8th, um, the SHS counselors will be at Sherman Middle and Piner in science classes to guide the students through the registration process. And I'm gonna kind of guide y'all today but um, it's going to be very similar to that process. And then February 11th, all course selections are due. So students will, um, will submit their um, Google form um, course selections 
um, in the classroom with us, but then they will go home with you and you can sit and talk to them about their course selections, help them to, um, you know, decide what's best for them. Um, and then um, we will take the, the last submission and I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, March 6th, the BCP or the Bearcat Collegiate Program applications are due and I'm going to go into that part later on in this um, video. And then in April, be looking for information about course request verifications. Um, we're going to provide you with the ninth grade courses, not the whole four year plan, because you'll be able to access that in the summer. But before you're able to access that, we want you to be able to see what the ninth grade courses are, and that will come in April. So when the student comes home um, on February 7th or 8th, um, they will have a sheet of paper that is going to give you um, all the information about how to access this Google form. And this is the um, course selection process. Um, we try to streamline it and make it as easy and, and um, um, accessible for everyone. So students are going to need their IDs, their last name, first name, parent name, but they'll need their parent's phone number and their parent's email address in order to successfully complete this form. And then we get into the actual course selections. So for English language arts, they can either choose English one or advanced English one. We call it AA English. Um, it's been like that, that uh, for a year now. It's previously pre-AP, but that is the only advanced option for English one that we have uh, for ninth graders. But um, uh, next will be mathematics. So there's a lot more um, options for for math depending on the course that they're currently taking in eighth grade. If they're taking an eighth grade math course, then their next choices would, would be Algebra 1 or Advanced Algebra 1. If they're currently taking Algebra 1 in eighth grade, then their course options would be Geometry or Advanced Geometry. And if they're currently taking geometry in eighth grade, then their course option would be advanced algebra two. Next we have um, science options. Um, we have three sciences that um, ninth, grade, ninth graders take. Um, IPC is integrated physics and chemistry, and this is a course you would take prior to getting into biology. It's not a required science, although we count it as one of the sciences, but it's not a required one. So if your student is in eighth grade science now, they are still eligible to go on to biology or advanced biology. But if your student um, isn't maybe isn't quite ready for biology or for bi the biology test, maybe they have failed um, um, a nine weeks or are just, you know, not um, maybe ready for biology, then you can put IPC. Um, in most cases though, the students that go into the IP IPC are students that um, we um, look at data, um, lots of data from the eighth grade um, teachers as well as um, EOC data during the summer to determine which of those students would go into IPC. Next, we have history. Um, there's world geography, advanced world geography, and then this is um, an, a unique opportunity for students to take an actual AP class that would be AP human geography. Advanced world geography would be an advanced course, but AP human is taught um, to a college curriculum, um, it's a, it's a national curriculum, and at the end, if they take the test and they make a three, four, or five, then they actually have um, college credit assigned to them um, through their college board account. And I'll talk about AP and advanced more in that section at the very end of the um, video today. Next, we have um, lots of foreign language options for your student. If they have already been in foreign language, this is also where they're going to tell us um, what classes they've already been in. And then you'll see um, 
some questions starting to pop up that say, do you want to do this for four years? And that is what helps the counselor to build the four-year plan um, based on the information uh, and the, the um, likes and dislikes of your student. So um, we're going to ask each student to rate their choices for second, third, and fourth. Um, there's some languages that will fill up. So we request more information from each person um, as their uh, second choice, third choice, and fourth choice. Because in most cases, they get their first choice. But in not every case does that occur, unfortunately. Then it says, are you currently taking Spanish? Um, and that's what is offered at the middle school level. Um, and then do you want to continue taking Spanish? So, um, of course, if they're taking Spanish 1, they're going to continue taking Spanish 2. But if they're currently taking Spanish 2, um, we ask if they want to continue because, um, again, the required courses only require that you have two foreign language credits. So that's how we attempt to build um, what's unique for your child. Next, we have fine arts, and it's another rating. We want you to rate first choice, second choice, third choice. Um, and um, knowing that band and orchestra are um, have auditions that are required, you, in most cases, need to have already been in band and orchestra in order to be um, to, to get into those programs in in high school in the ninth grade year. We have a, an, another um, great opportunity in um, musical theater. We have choir, we have art and uh, regular theater, and then we have dance as well, which is a new option. Um, dance can be um, counted as a PE credit or a fine art credit. Um, so if you're, if you um, put that dance is your first or possibly second choice, we may and use that information twice. Um, it says, will you take a fine art all four years? And this just helps us to build the four-year plan. Um, and then um, we recognize that some of our students are um, just very fine arts minded and they want to not only take theater, but they want to take band and they want to take art or dance and theater and choir. And um, so for those students, we um, have another opportunity for you to, um, to give us that information. If you put no on those th these questions, it doesn't even take you to the next section. So you, um, you'll be able to flow through the, the course selections very easily. Next, we ask, ask about PE and athletics. Um, if you click PE, then, um, and actually whenever you see the um, course uh, form, and if you watch the video for uh, the eighth grade, um, for the eighth grade registration, the one that we go through with the students, there's another option here, and it's aerobics. Um, and that may be an option this year that we um, are, are asking students for. So a PE would be more like a physical education. Aerobics would be more like a cardio type class. And then um, if you choose PE or um, aerobics, it just takes you to the next section. But if you choose athletics, then we want to know which of the athletics um, options um, your child chooses. Remembering that um, your child can be in more than one athletics, and we ask, do you play a second sport? Um, it is also um, very common for students in athletics to be in um, band and choir and other extracurricular activities, drill team and swimming, or cheer and volleyball. All of those things are encouraged because we want our students to be able to participate in more than one um, activity. Um, there may have to be some um, uh, communication and, and things between coaches and students um, involving um, time after school and things, but um, we, we highly encourage that. But we have volleyball, football, basketball, soccer, softball, baseball, swimming, track, and cross country. And um, so if your student chooses one of those sports, just um, um, they should know that it's a they're very highly competitive um, 
they are, um, in many cases, um, you have to make the team in order to stay in the, in the class and stay in the sport. Um, and, um, they are, um, pretty highly competitive. So students should probably have played that sport before with maybe with the exception of swimming, um, cross country, potentially, um, track, um, but volleyball, football, basketball, soccer, and softball and baseball, you probably should have played and are prepared to for the rigor of the sport. And so now we get into the fun part, the CTE career pathways. And these are all of the career pathways that um, we have. Your student um, was able to go on a tour of the CTE um, hallway or uh, the CTE building. Um, and um, they were able to see all of the things that they're offered. Also, we will go into more depth during the eighth grade registration um, video for the students. So, um, but these are all of the, the options that we have. Talk to your student about it. And, 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 and this is when you will, um, in your course registration form, um, put the first choice, the second choice, and the third choice um, of your student um, based on their interest and what seems the most appealing to them and what um, they could potentially be interested in learning about for their future. Uh, you will see they will have this sheet with them after the 7th and the 8th. Um, they're going to come home with this and, and um, at least three of the boxes should be checked. These um, tell us what is the ninth grade course, the 10th grade course, the 11th grade course, and the 12th grade course. Um, so if a student puts that their first selection or their first option is construction, then you'll know that their CTE course that we're going to put in their their um, four-year plan will be principles of construction and then we'll move forward with these courses on their four-year plan and this is the back side of the sheet and then of course this is where they're going to tell us um, what their first option second option and third options are of the ones that sound the most interesting um, so after they tell us cte then we ask a few questions in order to help um, to complete the four-year plan. A lot of our students are interested in a lot of math courses or they're interested in a lot of science courses. Um, if your student is interested in taking more math or more science or both, put yes or no to those answers. And then um, we provide an opportunity for comments and anything that we would need to know or that would be helpful as we're building the four-year plan, um, you can have your student um, put that information in or you can as well. And then the parent acknowledgement. So when we are with the students in the classroom, we're going to ask the students to put their name there. And that helps us to know that they have not completed that with the parent. Um, and, and we ask that they do go home and complete that with the parent. And then when you have put your name there, then that is you signing that you have reviewed it. You agree with what um, the student has put in uh, with the endorsements, the pathways, the class has chosen. And um, you are you're on board with what we have. Um, that doesn't mean that when you see the ninth grade courses, y'all don't decide to make a change in some way. But um, but this is uh, just you signing um, your acknowledgement of it. So we ask that students submit as many times as they'd like, just knowing that Friday at midnight is when they are, they are due, Friday the 11th at midnight. Um, and we are going to take the very last submission up until that time. And they, they won't be locked down so students can complete it on Saturday, Sunday, Monday after they're due. But... Um, in many cases, if we have already gotten to it and created the four-year plan, we are going to base it on the information that we have on Friday, February 11th. Um, 
but we will take the very last submission so that um, we don't take um, what we what the student created in the classroom with us but what they went home and um, talked about with you and then um, provide as much information to the counselor as possible to help us to build the four-year plan and then know that we will meet in october november um, of this current year with your ninth with the ninth grader at that point um, and then you'll be invited as well so if you have questions counselors are based on your students last name so students with the last name of a through es um, will contact miss pruitt um, Students with the last name of EU through LE will contact Ms. Bauer. Students with the last name of LI through RA will contact Ms. Strait. Students with um, RE through Z for last name uh, will be Ms. Banks. But if your student has been designated GT, then you will um, email me, Marianne Hill. Okay, so that concludes the registration portion. Now I'm going to briefly go over the Bearcat Collegiate Program so you have some information about it. If you are uninterested in this part, then um, the next part will be Advanced and AP. Um, so you can fast forward to that part. So the Bearcat Collegiate Program is a partnership that we have with Grayson College for um, students to not only complete a high school diploma, um, while they're in high school, but also get an Associate of Arts degree um, by the time that they finish high school. So why would a student want to pursue an Associate's degree while they're in high school? There's lots of reasons, but of course, just being able to kind of kill two birds with one stone, get 60 hours of college credit, also get high school credit, and in many cases, by taking the same course and getting both credits at, at one time. Um, and of course, they are transferable to all Texas public universities, um, the, the core classes, plus the um, 18 elective credit hours that we offer in this associate's degree. Um, they get to, of course, earn both credits at the same time and then save on tuition. The most up-to-date information that I have heard is that each three-hour credit is um, $299 for um, Grayson um, courses. And, um, of course, if your student is, um, is on the free or reduced lunch based on income, um, then they can are eligible for free or reduced tuition. Um, and that's something we would work with your student on as well. So um, students are going to take three hours in the fall, their freshman year, three hours in the spring, their freshman year. These are elective hours. And um, the same for sophomore year. It gets them kind of geared up. It's kind of slow um, getting started. Um, and then, of course, junior and senior year, you can see it really amps up. They're going to have 13 hours in the fall and the spring, their junior year, 12 hours in the fall and the spring, their senior year. But we do have, um, now we have, this is eighth graders coming up will be our fourth cohort of um, Bearcat Collegiate Program students. So we have really learned some um, best practices and um, um, some things that will help students what, what sort of courses we can take during the summer that will kind of lessen the load and things like that. So um, it doesn't necessarily have to fall just like that. We've kind of learned how to um, lessen their load during junior and senior year, but, um, but that's, that's um, pretty much the way um, the courses will fall. So this is um, just a, um, sample of a ninth grade schedule. Um, of course, they're going to have English 1 and then their math, whether it be algebra, geometry, or algebra 2. Um, then they'll have biology, world geography in some way. It could be AP human geography as well. Um, they'll have a foreign language unless they've completed it, and then they actually end up with another elective. 
Um, and then this is the, the um, Bearcat Collegiate Program elective. It just takes up one class period. This is learning frameworks, and this is um, intro to computing. And then they can take their band, their theater, choir, football, soccer, whatever it is that they are wanting to participate in. So the good thing about it is one size doesn't necessarily fit all for every student. Um, it can be very individualized while they still are participating in a program that puts them um, in getting an associate's uh, degree at the end. We do encourage advanced classes and um, they end up just by nature of the um, Bearcat Collegiate Program, they end up getting an Arts and Humanities endorsement. And then another thing to note is that based on our school board policy, um, AP courses and dual credit courses are categorized and weighted as tier one courses for GPA purposes. So they get the same weight as an AP course. And then this is um, a ninth grade, 10th grade, 11th and 12th grade um, plan, four year plan for each um, of the students that participate in the uh, Bearcat Collegiate Program. Um, and what courses um, they would take. And then most importantly, of course, we will go through this um, each year to be sure that the students are, are um, completing the courses that are necessary. But this is probably the most important um, screen because this is the college course number for Grayson, and this is the college course name, and then of course which college credit hours that they would be getting. And um, what I encourage parents to do before determining whether their student wants to participate in this program is to, um, you know, find out which colleges uh, your student is interested in and potentially make phone calls to determine whether or not these courses are courses that will transfer. Um, in in um, cases of um, public Texas colleges, it's, an, it's, a, it's a yes for sure. They are going to transfer, but if your student is wanting to go to Rice or um, an out-of-state college, um, it would just be worth a phone call to find out if they accept Grayson courses because we don't from uh, the council, the Sherman High School Counseling Department aren't going to be able to know each and every school and what they um, what they will transfer and what they will not. Um, so in in uh, private or um, out of state college, um, if that's a possibility for your student, you'll probably you'll want to make that phone call to determine if this is something right for your student. And then, of course, what if a student is failing? And, and we don't just set it and forget it, of course. We are very hands-on, and we have um, um, resources and opportunities for your student. If they're struggling, we um, help them through. But uh, Ms. Dozier is our college career dual credit coordinator on our campus. And she will help your student with any withdrawal processes and timelines, if that's just the way it needs to be. She has a very... Um, close relationship and good communication with Grayson College professors. Um, and when they contact her about a student that is um, underperforming or just needing help, or if there's any other issue, then she'll contact the counselor and the counselor will contact the parent um, as well as the student. So we do certainly have some processes to keep your student um, engaged and um, moving forward and progressing. And then, of course, at that time, you'll meet with your the student will meet with their counselor to determine to determine how the student's schedule could be affected. Um, so you have to be a current eighth grader. You have to have a current GPA of a two point five or higher. You have to pass all your STAR exams, complete all your application requirements, and the application is due by March sixth, twenty uh, twenty twenty two. Um, I would say that students most importantly need to be self-motivated. They need to have some good time management skills because they are completing college level work. And um, we have um, seen the, the um, best results from students that are um, just willing to, to go the extra mile and do the things that they need to do and are self-motivated to get the associate's degree while they're in high school. 
Of course, if you have any questions, my name is Mary Ann Hill. That's my email address. And then there's information on the um, Sherman ISD website. Um, if you go www.shermanisd.net slash BCP. Okay, so next I'm going to go into advanced academics. And advanced academic courses are just courses that we offer that produce just a little more rigor um, and um, help students to um, uh, get um, a, a more advanced um, learning in that course. So in some cases we have advanced courses, AA courses, such as English 1, we have AA English 1, um, and AA English 2, and then of course we will move into, for the junior year, the senior year, we have AP courses. Um, they are, uh, of course, more rigorous, but they offer more um, grade point average, uh, more points for grade points, and um, they um, are, are just, uh, in, in all, more advanced courses. AP courses enable students to pursue college-level studies while they're still in high school. So advanced sort of puts them in a good place to be able to take AP courses. Um, you must be enrolled in and um, successful in an advanced course prior to taking an AP course with a couple of exceptions. Um, AP courses are taught um, to a college board curriculum. Um, that every student in the nation is um, being taught. And then at the end of the course, um, students are given an AP test that every student in the nation will be taking um, and at the same time. And um, if the student is able to score a three, a four, or a five on that test, then they um, have gotten a, a um, um, a grade in their college board account that can translate into college credits. Um, when the student gives the college board um, um, information to the college that they are sending their information to. So um, a dual credit course taken actually gains a grade on a transcript and that would be the same for um, the Bearcat Collegiate Program. AP courses um, don't translate into a transcript. They are, um, it's a grade on a test in a college board account. And then when that is given to the college that the student is going to go to their first year out of high school, then they can be assigned credit based on that score. Um, a four or a five is going to be potentially um, required in order to get college credit for some colleges, maybe Texas A&M or UT or potentially Austin College. Um, but in some instances, a three would be fine. So there are, are lots of things that uh, um, can be different between one school and another when dealing with the dual credit, but also AP. Each AP course has an exam at the end. Um, they're timed. Um, like two to three hours. There's multiple choice, essay, problem solving, short answer sections as well on the AP exam. Um, a five means that they're extremely well qualified to get that, that um, equivalent of the, uh, let's say it's AP world history, they could get the equivalent of the world history college credit. Um, four is well qualified and three is qualified. Um, students earning a three or higher can be assigned college credit depending on the college. Um, just and that can't be stressed enough. Um, check with your college, the college of your choice, for score minimums. AP courses tell college that admission officials, um, college admission officials, that students are challenging themselves and preparing for the rigors that they'll encounter in the college career. I have a lot of students and parents ask me if they have to have that AP course in order to get into college. And the answer is always no, but um, because colleges don't just look at one thing, they look at um, overall course content, AP courses, um, and, and of course the most rigorous um, 
course options. Um, but they also look at GPA and they also look at entrance exams, SAT exams, ACT. So it's not just one thing. Um, in many cases, it could be just as good to take a regular course and do really well in it as opposed to taking an AP course and not having enough time in the day um, in order to be successful. So it it's, should be very individualized based on your student, their motivation to, to take the course, as well as um, how many extracurricular activities are they um, participating in, um, which could result in a very well-rounded student or a very stressed out student. Um, so five AP courses can be, um, could be a lot because in what AP classes typically entail is more outside um, of the school day uh, readings and homework videos and uh, just outside um, uh, work being done in order to be able to master the objectives. 90% of colleges and universities report that a student's AP experience favorably impacts admission decisions. So advanced courses, all students perform at rigorous academic levels um, and they're preparing themselves for AP courses. And that's sort of the, the um, uh, what's great about advanced courses. They are of course more rigorous and um, your student will be learning but learning in order to be able to um, take on that AP course. So most of the courses that are um, offered for ninth graders are going to be advanced courses. Uh, we have advanced English, advanced algebra, advanced geometry, advanced algebra two, if you're taking geometry, advanced world geography, advanced biology, advanced art, um, AP computer science, um, um, is a possibility um, that we will be offering that. There is a prerequisite of Algebra 1, so students have to have completed Algebra 1 in order to take that course, that AP course. And then, of course, we have AP Human Geography as well. Those are the two AP courses that ninth graders can take um, that could translate into college courses. 10th grade, we have mostly advanced, and then we have AP World History, and then um, they can also take um, advanced um, college, uh, computer science as well if they didn't take it their ninth grade year. We have a lot more AP options 11th grade year. We have AP English 3. Uh, math is advanced algebra or advanced pre-cal. Um, AP physics, AP US history, advanced art or AP art. Um, advanced Spanish or Advanced French 3, and AP Psychology. And then senior year, students can take AP English 4, AP Calculus, AP Government, AP Economics, AP Stats um, as a, a great option for um, 12th grade and potentially 11th grade um, math AP options. Um, AP Bio, AP Chemistry, AP Environmental Science. We have another AP Art. We have um, AP Art Drawing, AP Art 2D, and AP Art 3D options. Um, many times we are able to offer an AP Music Theory, and then of course we always have AP Spanish 4 and AP French 4. So we have quite a number of AP offerings throughout your student's high school career. Um, so each of your students have um, the ability to earn um, AP uh, courses, dual credit courses, advanced courses, and regular uh, course credits. Um, regular course credits are considered Tier 3, and they're on a 4.0 scale. Advanced courses are um, considered tier two and they're on a 4.5 scale. And tier one courses are AP courses and dual credit courses and they're on a five point scale. So you're able to earn more grade points for advanced AP and dual credit than all other state recognized courses. Um, and then if you have 
more questions um, based on this information, um, you can uh, always email Ms. Butts. She's our advanced placement teacher. And um, um, I am Marianne Hill, uh, counselor for advanced academics, if you have any further questions. Okay, this concludes all of the information that I have for you today. If you still have questions, please um, contact one of the counselors um, or Ms. Butts. Um, if you have a question about dual credit, uh, Christy Dozier is um, your point of contact there, as well as uh, myself, Marianne Hill. Um, there is going to be another video that you can watch um, that is for the eighth graders for the course selection. If you're still wanting some more information, I'm probably going to cover very similar things, but I hope this has answered a lot of questions for you. And we are very excited for your students to be ninth graders in the 2022-23 school year.